we finally made it back to Germany after uh, seven weeks in Russia. Yes, all is well, uh, that ends well. We passed all the exams. Now we're back to Cologne. As we can see, the carnival is going on full swing, but we won't have time to enjoy it. Yeah, because I'll be flying to uh, Houston tomorrow for robotics and then on to Canada. And you? And uh, I'll be doing a parabolic flight. And, of course uh, you'll be doing parabolic flights. You always do parabolic flights. I have to test this key suit for emission and That's true. That's and then true. Uh, we'll fly to Japan. Yeah, in about a month. And then after Japan, we'll be uh, back in Russia. So what did we complete this time in Russia? Uh, Winter Survival for you, I did it two years ago, and then almost all the theory for the series. That's right, so on top of the motion control, I did Winter Survival. You did it, like you said, two years ago? So we can have a look at it, and you can critique our, uh, our Winter Survival experience. Let's have a look. All right. Good morning. It's Monday morning here in Star City in Russia. It's still dark outside. Uh, I'm really excited today, but I have to admit I'm also a little bit nervous because today is the start of three days of Russian winter survival. It's uh, minus 15 outside. I'll show you on the thermometer. I hope you guys can uh, see this. Minus 15. So it's going to be cold. I'll be, um, I'll be outside for the next three days with my Russian crewmate, Sergei Volkov. He'll be the commander of the Soyuz spacecraft when we launch in September 2015. And we'll be simulating a landing that's gone wrong. Um, a landing somewhere in the winter in the forest. And it'll take the search and rescue teams three days to get to our position and rescue us. And so we have to survive by uh, building a lean-to shelter the first night. That's a shelter made out of uh, yeah, trees, branches, anything we can find also using some of the parachute material. And then the second night, uh, we'll build a, a teepee-like structure using the parachute material from the Soyuz. So it's gonna be exciting and cold. So it reminds me of the survival, the one I, we did with Samantha. So as you can see, all the winter gear comes in the Soyuz. Uh, it's pre-packed. It's not built for comfort or style, but it's built for warmth. Not style? I look pretty good. Uh, you don't not, think so? Not too bad, but I've seen better. But I like the color. I like the hat. The hat doesn't suit anyone. That's no? The, no, I think that's what it does. But anyway, so making use of everything you can, the parachute, more than 500 meters square, and the seat liners, everything you could for a survival situation. And this is our uh, lean-to shelter, the most rudimentary shelter that we built for the first night. Does it look up to scratch? It's uh, it's pretty cool. I think what matters most is the fire. As long as you keep the fire going, then you'll be fine. So main activity, cutting down wood and cutting down more wood. That's true. And the second night, the TP, I prefer the TP definitely. It's much more comfortable. It has a door. It has all the, the modern comfort. So second night is actually quite good. I mean, it's just like at home. All the modern comforts of uh, sleeping in the woods. <laughs> Uh, all right, and uh, what uh, you know, it's Murphy's law. When the situation is bad, it gets even worse. So medical emergency. Yeah, a simulated medical a emergency. Simulated medical emergency. But I see you only had a broken arm. How easy is that? We had a broken leg, so we had to carry a crew member. That's much more difficult. Who did you have to carry? Uh, but we had we were lucky because we had to carry Samantha, so uh, she was by far the lightest of the of the crew. So well, it's a good job they didn't have to carry you. <laughs> they wouldn't have gotten very far. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> But anyway, so the helicopter is rescuing you. Yeah, here we're signaling for the helicopter to come up with us. a flare. And congratulations, you survived. Yeah, thank you. 